it count you as one? If like if you're if you're viewing it, uh, I think so. That can count. I okay. think so. Can we have at least two. Oh yeah. Least 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 I I'm not I'm not even wasting any time. We're starting this up. That's what's up. This is gonna be this is gonna be the one. What's going on? Good morning, DD two fourteen. Gaming, I hope you got your coffee ready or your whiskey or whatever you enjoy. Oh, check this out! I, I, I'm doing rippets again today. Oh I shit! <laughs> I love these things, man. Dude, are I'm you like... traveling all the way to the Middle East or to deployment <laughs> stations just to find these things? What's going on yeah. here? I know. No, I'm not. Although uh, I do got to send a shout out to uh, a good brother of mine. Uh, he got, he got back from uh, the Middle East yesterday. He was gone for 15 months, Whoa. literally for. He's a, he's a reserve. He's a reservist, and um, he doesn't want me to share uh, where exactly where he was at. But he was over there for for the last fifteen months as a reservist. He actually extended his time, and being in the reserves, he was allowed to do that. Um, if you're active duty, you do a you know a nine month tour, typical tour, and you you go home with your with your unit. He was actually allowed to extend. He chose to extend, and he stayed there for fifteen months. So uh, welcome home, welcome home to to my brother. So, uh, welcome home, man. Welcome home. Hey, good morning, Deshaun. What's going on, man? If you're here, say something, guys. We 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 see the numbers, but we don't see the, the names. But uh, holy shit, man. Um, we haven't been live. In a, in a few weeks, it's been it's been pretty busy. It's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. We schedules conflicting, and we had to just kind of pre-record and and just put it out there. But uh, it is it is good to be live again, live live and large and in charge. Oh man, yeah. it, it feels good. It feels good, man. So um, uh, yeah, how, yeah. So for, well, first off, how was your week? How was your week, man? Uh it was it was okay. Um, I <clears throat> I am going hot and heavy on. Out processing the army, so I got. I didn't. I didn't have a lot of appointments this week, but literally starting tomorrow, it's going to be off to the races, 110 miles an hour, um, and I will. I will be. Fi I will be final. I will, my, my final out is on July 30th, and then I go on terminal leave on August the first. So, but because because August first is a Sunday, I final out on that Friday. So I've got basically, um, about, I've got about days. a month, I've got a I've got a month and three weeks to get some appointments done, and I do my I start my uh, phase one physical on Thursday, so I got stuff coming up this week where it's like it's going to be wham bam thank you ma'am, I got a little bit of leave in July, I'll come back and two weeks after I come back from that little bit of leave I go on terminal leave so it's Shit. happening. Yeah, it's it, happened, dude. It's fucking. Yeah, I remember that feeling when, uh, you know, that 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 feeling. I, I would be doing PT, and I'm just like, I have two more days, two more right. days. Yeah, you know, one more day. You know, it, it, it's it's I'm a, incredible. Dude, I'm, a, I'm man. a ghost at work. I'm I'm a literal ghost at work. Like that. Like I don't even barely show up. I go I go to the fort some days just to just to work out. Like literally. <laughs> there like, you go. You know, like I don't, they don't expect me there. Like, yeah, that's. I guess that's the, uh, the 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 upside of being a staff sergeant, right? Is like I'm allowed to disappear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, like, there you go, man. So. Take full take full advantage, man. The army army took advantage of me, so I'm enjoy I'm enjoying uh, my last couple of months here. That, that's exactly that's exactly how I felt. It's exactly yeah. how I felt. I was just like, you know what? They they done did this to me. I'm gonna do this yeah, to them. I'm okay. There's no yeah. There's like zero. There's zero guilt. I'm like I'm all about taking full advantage. I'm like, I'll I'll, I'll be there if they need me there. Like I had to go to, I had to go to a briefing on uh, was it Thursday or Friday? I think it was Friday, uh, and the fucking briefing was two goddamn hours long, dude. Like I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, was but there, it was was there PowerPoint? Well, of course, but it was it. <laughs> they made they, they they did the best they could. It was it was. the uh extremist briefing so we had to be briefed ah, on yeah. extremism and extremism in the ranks but the cool part was is my my command my commander is basically a sergeant major because i'm at the academy so S sergeant major gave the brief and then he facilitated discussion amongst all of us cadre at the academy so it, it wasn't entirely crappy but it it was one of the longer briefings i've had to sit through in the army but it was also probably the last briefing i'll ever have to sit through right so <laughs> there you go 
Well, there you go. You can't complain right. about that, man. You you, you really all. can't. It, it's, Not at it's, all. I mean, uh, this week for me, the weather's been shitty, but we finally got to use the pool the other day. I saw that. How was that? How'd oh, that go? Oh, man, it was nice. You know, just, uh, you know, we don't get to really sit outside a lot. And it's very interesting because... Like, as I was looking at, you know, I was sitting there and kind of looking around. And I'm just like, okay, I live in New Jersey, but, like, mm-hmm. the block that I live on has so much tree, like, there's so much tree line and shit that you forget that you're... That in, you're in a city? Yeah, that you're, that, yeah, that you're, that you're in New Jersey. Because I would say that we're, like, in a, in, like, a, what I would like is, to call suburban, does that, if that right. makes sense? It does. You're, you're, um... The, what you're describing is almost when you when you come to Kansas City in August with the family, um, it's a, it is exactly like that. Like you will be you'll be in the heart of like the city, and I'm telling you, brother, like the minute you pull off the the highway and you enter like a neighborhood, you can't tell that you're in a city anymore because it's all yeah. just tall trees and. Oh boy, am I back? Yeah, you're back, man. I think I just cut out. It, sorry. You know, it looks like, like, it... like tall trees and green, green shrubbery. Yeah, sorry. Like, yeah, that's it. It's interesting because like about... a lot of people don't. A lot of people think that those places are myths, but I I live in it. You know, like if right. you, if you go right. if, if you go like maybe three blocks to the east or whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it's it there's a small city there it's it's very interesting yeah. I, I, a very sprawl, sprawling ur, sprawling urban area yeah you get the best but you get like, the best of both worlds it's yeah, nice a couple 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 hundred meters away like you can't even tell you're in a city so yeah i get it i totally get it so yeah yeah so uh so you had a good week kids got to go swimming for- uh, and weather's been semi shitty but Good enough for a day to go uh, swimming? Yep, yeah, but everybody is shopping in retail, boy. Let me tell you, man. Everyone's coming oh, really? in. Everyone's yeah, coming back, man. Stop coming. Stop, just stop shopping, guys, because all the summer shit is gone. <laughs> you guys waited too <laughs> long. Save your money. Yeah, the, the pools are gone. Now you're going to have to wait until, like, fucking September until all the shit goes on sale. Yeah, you like know? little 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 Jimmy, little Jimmy and little Sally need fucking Christmas this year, guys. So fucking save your goddamn money. Yeah, buy them a the pool. Shit. Buy them a pool that's buy on sale, pool. and then tell there them it's it, it's for the summer. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, like Christmas they, ideas from John. There's like this. Um, like there's this pool. It's so fucking cool. It's eight feet long. It's made by Intex. Okay. This is not an affiliation. I, I I think legally or whatever we have to say that I have no fucking idea. We are not an affiliation. I'm just saying this is a good, pretty cool fucking product. And you fill up the one ring on top. And okay. You, and when you put the water in, it raises the pool. Interesting. Yeah. So And you, it doesn't have a That's... filter or anything. It goes about. Like, Crazy. Yeah, it goes about maybe four feet up. And I'm just like, damn. And all you have to do is just, I mean, it's a lot of water. To well, right. Of. But, but still. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So into, uh, I got some weird news for you, man. Well, actually, first I kind of want to jump into something that a lot of people are talking that uh, for some I, I don't want to say for some odd reason, but Henry Cavill has, you know, he posted a picture up with um, him wearing a Warhammer sweater. Oh uh, yeah. Now that was you know, was he wearing was it Warhammer or Warhammer forty k? Um, I, I, can't, I, I can't tell. I can't tell either. But when you look at the picture, yeah. Actually, let me pull it up for the. But the but the but the fact that you know Superman is a, is like a, a Warhammer nerd, right? Like, it's crazy, you know. And yeah, he, you know, because you don't see a lot of these people, a lot of actors really person. Uh, yeah. You don't see a personable no, don't. Uh, relationship with them. Because you don't. Well, and a lot of them, a lot of them don't want to put out like a lot of them don't want to even put out like their their nerdy their nerdy habits, right? But apparently, Superman has been very open. He goes to comic cons all the time. Uh, I think there's a video of him. I think there's a video of him somewhere where he he dressed up as like Spider Man or something, and then yeah. he like lifts he lifts up his uh, mask, and it's like Superman is Spider Man kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like what a, what a, he seems like a gen, genuinely good dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I mean, he was also very excited to to be on The Witcher, 
And and on yeah. top of that, I just yeah. I just read that he actually um, he while locked into a game of World of Warcraft, he mm-hmm. was he missed a phone call from Zack Snyder for the role of Superman. Interesting, and, you know. And he said that he, because he, he was gaming, <laughs> yeah, because he was gaming. I think, and I think it's pretty cool. You know, we we know you know we know of some of the you know like Jack Black and. You know, there's a lot of baseball players. A lot of baseball players are are, tw- are on Twitch right now, and that, and it's funny because we had this conversation in in our chat the other day how yeah, we did. Twitch <laughs> is kind of like making celebrities celebrities again. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and well, it, it's a great. I mean, it's a great platform, and I I, I did it a couple times last year. Um, Somebody, uh, somebody in our group uh, showed me kind of how to get on there, and I did it a couple times. Um, I, I need to get back into it, and I, but speak uh, for your for your personal situational awareness. Um, I got Battlefield Four downloaded. I tried to play it. I tried to play it a little bit last night. I may have been a little bit in my cups, so I didn't get very far. And I, <laughs> I really sucked, for, for lack of a better word. I really sucked at it. So I'm gonna have to do a do a, a hard reset on that game today when I'm not so in my cups. Yeah. So um, it. It's it's interesting because it, there's a lot going on. Yeah, you know, there it, there really is. That like that game looks intense because I was in my cups and I I was like not even making it out of like the intro like level where it's like trying to show you like what controls these and I was just sitting there like <laughs> <laughs> like at, like <laughs> at, like after mi- after midnight you know what I mean like just like trying to play this like really intense like complex game and like i failed <laughs> failed miserably that was a face plant and a half dude. i actually have this so. i have this really intense clip and it wasn't even like of an awesome killer or anything and um Are you okay what happened i just saw something in my camera and now I don't see it anymore. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Ooh, creepy. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> um, the, ghost of, the, the ghost of Sanchez house. Yeah. I, I think there, well, his, his name is Alex. So, so, oh, okay. I, so my, so, okay, okay. so well, we're doing that then. Yeah. So my daughter has, has said to me, um, hang so, on. I mean, have you ever seen MacGruber dude? Like where he has like sex with the ghost of his, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who has ghost sex, dude? <laughs> What was I saying before that shit creeped me out? Um, <laughs> you were talking about you were talking about a clip you had. Um, clip okay, you so it was a so this clip I have is of me is, <laughs> is of me playing Battlefield. Um, in fact, fuck it. Let's let's just watch it. Okay, let, I'm down. Let's just fucking watch it. Let me let me pull it up real quick. I have it here somewhere. Um, so in the clip. I'm flying in a helicopter and I'm I'm just like I'm just like oh shit you know this is this is pretty crazy and the guy's piloting and all of a sudden um there's just fucking it, it looked like Vietnam I was actually I was actually playing with Chance at this moment and okay. um I was I was for those tell- who don't know Chance's Chance is another one of our admins so yeah so at, up, at this moment I was just kind of just like freaking out like wait a minute what's going on here all oh, these are all my baseball. <laughs> she posted she said henry cable is my celebrity freebie the, ce- the <laughs> celebrity what... hey you know it, it, a Honey, lot i'll of tell pe- you right now if, if you if you can pull down henry cable like i will let that happen okay i will absolutely let that happen you 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 do you baby like henry cable i would i would have sex with henry cable okay so by all means baby you, you do you he's gotta right? have the he's gotta have the stash though no stash, no nothing. <laughs> Actually, I like him a little bit better without the stash, but thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so I got some. Weird fucking news to to kind of talk to you guys about. Um, the first one that I have here, um, I guess I guess this isn't much of a. I guess may I guess maybe this this wouldn't be considered weird, but but I guess this is like one of those things that's just like oh fuck you know fuck this shit. But there is a pool in London. I'll lower the volume. Too. I don't know if they can see. I don't know if they can see that or not. Oh yeah, I put it's up on the on the screen. I got it up. On okay. Here. So like these. Oh people, yeah, it is okay. Yeah, okay. so so these people, 
they're 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 on this fucking pool right and, you know and and I'm, I'm looking at it and the first thing i'm thinking is what if someone just fucking sh threw, threw a baseball right across it or or, <laughs> or if someone shot a bullet from from below it like what what or if, there, what if someone throws someone off the fucking side well i mean that's i guess that's you know high risk high reward there you know what i mean like I'm, i'd be down to swim that i'd be down to swim in that pool and i also have i have to assume that is probably like extremely thick glass you know because you know you're talking about liability and insurance stuff so like you have to assume like it that that glass is probably even bulletproof i'd be i, I would be willing to bet that it's I, probably bullet i really <laughs> i it, it might be i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised it might be um it's a little crazy the next is you you have a, you have a, you have a little bit of a fear of heights too is that correct john yeah that's why like we just talked about before roller coasters <laughs> are going to be yeah. a, a, weir a weird thing for me Come Kansas I'm gonna City. get you. I'm gonna get your. I'm gonna get your ass on one, dude. Like you have to do at least one with me. I, I, and if you if you puke all over me, dude, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, like, like that's gonna be the first time in my life I was covered in fucking vomit, right? Maybe, maybe it'll be the first time it's ever documented. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, um, so we don't have. I we don't. I couldn't find the video of this because it's. So, it, I just couldn't find it for some odd reason. But in California, a 17 year old girl fought a large bear off her fence after the animal took swipes at her dogs. Hell yeah. That's what's up, dude. That is what's up right there. Fighting off a bear, dude. That is what's up. Little little known fact little known factoid about bears. Um there are certain there are certain types of bears, believe it or not, that are a lot more scared of us than we would typically be of them. Absolutely. So if you So if you scream, you yell, you kick rocks at it, you know all that crap. They they, they there are certain types that will that will tend to immediately like run away and like vacate the area. Um, there are other types though. Uh, I would not necessarily take that um, take that course of action with uh, specifically uh, the Kodiak, uh, i.e. grizzly bear up in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, those those fucking things have actually been known to hunt humans. So you know, take your uh, take your bear your bear, bear fighting seriously, people, and, d and do your research uh, before you decide to go out there and try to t tackle a a bear. Okay. Although if you do, you have you have my you have my approval. Like you know, kick some fucking ass and take Absolutely. names. All right. Don't, don't be a bitch. And I just right? and I just want to answer Nikki as well. She said, "Don't do it, John. I'll sit on the bench and watch with you." And let me tell you, there'll be a third person on there. My wife, she'll be watching with us too because. I'm not so am sure. I gonna be, am I gonna be taking all the, am I am I, am I gonna Actually, be like taking all the kids on the roller coasters? I'm not sure. I think my wife likes roller coasters. I gotta ask her when she okay. walks when she walks when she walks back in here. I do all do that at yeah. amusement parks, man. I do all I do all that shit. I'm like See, the, the, no, the, no, the, the no. more I feel like I'm gonna die, the, the more I feel like I'm gonna die. The fucking the more alive I feel. No, so I'm just no, like water. Hey, yolo. Yeah, now water parks. <laughs> it's a whole. There's a water park right next. Right, there's a water park right next door to the, oh, yeah. the music park we're going to, so we'll be do, we will be doing that as well. Oh yeah, so. that's going to be. Um, so, the the woman, the 17 year old girl named Haley Monarico, said the dog that the bear grabbed was the baby, so I have to protect the baby. Uh -oh. <laughs> so the black bear uh -huh. has been walking with two cubs atop a fence at the home uh, in Bradbury, oh. Los Angeles, on the foothills of San Gabriel Mountains. Although the cubs bolted, the mama bear turned to follow. She also began to swipe at the dogs. And she says, I go oh. over to the bear. I look at it in the eyes. And the first thing I do is I push it. I push the bear. I push an apex predator, man. <laughs> and yeah. to be honest, I don't think I pushed her that hard. I, had, I just pushed her enough to make her lose her balance. That's probably, yeah, like... I was gonna say, but I didn't. I didn't really want to mention names. But black bears are are one of the types of bears that will typically. The fact that that bear had cubs, though, that that's that now is I'm that that's exactly now what, I'm spooked. Because that's like when when animals have their 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 young around them, they're more they're more ferocious. Oh yeah, they get they get aggressive as fuck, and good for her. She she probably scared the black bear by making it lose its balance, and that's probably what spooked it more than anything. But. That's scary, dude. With a, a, a bear with its cubs, that is that's spooky. That's spooky, spooky. Like yeah. that's good for her. Good for that girl, man. Like that's badass. 
freaking kicking ass on a bear. Bear, dude. That's freaking dope. All right, so. What's up next? This is the story I've been waiting to fucking tell you, and <laughs> I, the only reason why I have why I'm showing you this, you're the only one that could see this, Jay, but I need this for the sound clip because. Okay. All right, I can't. See, I can't see anything right this just was, yet. This was reported by. You don't have to see anything. You're good. Oh, okay. Um, in an Indian wedding, a bride dies during the nuptials. And the family offered up her sister instead. What? Change places. What? Like, like, like the, what well, the bride just like killed over and died, and then they're like, "Hey, here's your sister. You yeah. can still get married today." Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I don't know. What to, I don't really know what to do with that. Like, it, it's, I know the, um, in the country of India, they have, they still have like a case, a case system. Basically, yes. like, you know, there's like a, you know, there's different classes. And I know they have in a lot of their, in the hierarchy of, of things in the class system in India, their families, a lot of the families want to marry into a better family, basically, if that makes sense. So there is a lot of that, I guess, there's still some of that very, very traditional kind of stuff going on. But yeah. The, and, like the how did she die? What happened? Did she like have a heart attack? Like what the fuck, man? Like, um, like so well, the, it, it, first off, that's not even the end of it. Um, I, oh, God, I don't, God. I don't. I, when I go through the article, I, I uh, <laughs> you know, first off, before we get more deeper into this, because this is this is heavy. This is this is some crazy shit. Okay, and and I can't fathom this. But I'm not trying to shit on anyone's culture at all. I, I just want that to be known. No, you know, just be just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I'm shitting on it. But we have to understand the scale of how fucking bizarre this is. Um so it says here uh, the strange tale played out when a bride reportedly collapsed and died of a heart attack just as the ceremony kicked off. And she had just exchanged garlings with her hubby to be. Um, she was this declared dead on the scene, and now this would normally put a halt to the wedding. Right. But in this right. case, the bride and groom's families they huddled up like like in a fucking football game, <laughs> and they came up with with a solution, and they said we're just gonna offer up we're just gonna offer up the sister, and um, the brother the brother of the of the sister who died says it was a bizarre situation as the wedding of my younger sister took place while the dead body of my other sister was moved into another room oh my god dude so, that is oh my god dude no like i i mean bro bro i'm, in, I'm into all kinds of crazy stuff dude don't get me wrong all right no no you know i'm not here to judge anybody for their uh for, for their different uh absolutely you know, Absolutely. Adult, 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 adult uh, fun time activities. One thing I'm definitely not into is uh, the whole sister thing when one of the sisters is dead, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know, I mean, if they're both alive, you know, I might be able to get get down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> but you know, when one of them is dead, that just that, that throws a whole there's a whole nother kink to that that I really just haven't had a lot of time as an adult to explore. I really don't know if I want to. Yeah. You know, that that's kind of a really weird place to go. You know. Um, you know, with, with with the experiences I've had, you know, as an adult, um, that's just not really a, a fetish I'm willing to explore. Yeah, it's a you know weird. I mean? It's it's a very weird thing. I mean, they didn't. It doesn't sound like that they called the ambulance right away or even nine one one. But it's it. They kept the party going, and the body was just laying in the other room. I. This is. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I would do. I would definitely have a dance. I would definitely have a dance for the corpse. I would definitely do that. That would be fun. Like get married and then have a dance with the corpse, dude. That'd be freaking oh, cool, shit. dude. At least she died happy, right? <laughs> I, I, apparently so. I mean, that's like I mean, 
I can think of wor- I can definitely think of worse ways to go. I mean, if you talk about a massive, typically when people have massive heart attacks and they die, that's cardiac arrest. So you you kind of just you kind of just go unconscious basically, and you die. Like so, you don't even you don't feel anything. There's no pain. There's no nothing. You just immediately like you 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 collapse and die. Like that's it. Absolutely. So I mean, I can, I can think I can definitely think of worse ways to go. Um, I had a buddy. He's a he's a former Marine. Um, he actually collapsed on a morning PT run, and a Navy corpsman ended up saving his life. Uh, he he now has a pacemaker. He was in he was in he was in a drug induced coma for a month, but he literally like he, if that Navy corpsman had not been there, my buddy would have died that day. And and, and he uh but he actually he entered he entered cardiac arrest and he entered cardiac arrest Shit. and. He, he would he would have died if that corpsman had not been there and Good performed uh, life saving life saving procedures basically. Good for and him. yeah, he was he was in a hospital for a month and then one day um, his um, we him and his wife we all three of us went to the same high school and so I was in contact with his wife because they were in Japan at the time and one day I got a a text message from his wife and it was a picture of him reading a newspaper and smiling at the camera and like I started crying dude because like I thought my homie was gonna fucking die regardless. And there he was. And there he was, just sitting up, sitting up, smiling at the camera. Like he's got a pacemaker now. He's out. He's doing good. Dude lives in Hawaii with it, with his beautiful wife and their beautiful kid. You know. And I'm oh, that's I'm the proud life, man. Dude. That's the life. Yeah. yeah. So good, good for him. But yeah, like at a wedding and just to keep the party going. I mean, I guess I could kind of see keeping the party going. I don't. I still don't know about the whole. Sit, I mean, Swi- aside switching from the cl- it off. Yeah. Yeah, that's still a little. That's still tweaking me a little bit. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a little it is, off to me. It is such an odd situation, and, and I mean, I mean, granted, we've heard of weirder things, you know. We have, we have, <laughs> we have, we oh, absolutely have. Holy shit! It's it's it, that's just a weird like the whole thing is. I, I guess that's how they do in India, man. I guess that's how they do in India. So cheers, you cheers, know, cheers the, to the family. But, but then it comes to a question: Is this is this something that in their culture is it like, you know? Because we know that they have the arranged marriage thing, right? You know, which again, that's probably I that's don't probably, understand. But I think that's probably the bigger part of this is that it was it was probably arranged to begin with, and the the family of the bride probably wanted to ensure that they that their family was intertwined with the the groom's family i have to assume i don't know because i i'm i'm a little i have a very baseline knowledge on the indian culture and and the and the country absolutely but after after that baseline my 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 knowledge in, in my brain my the the rolodex in my brain for knowledge on india gets really really short really quick yeah so so yeah but i mean Sorry for your loss and congratulations on the new marriage. I guess <laughs> like I don't really know what to do yeah, with this one. <laughs> it's 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 a, it's an odd one, but you see why I waited until now oh, to yeah. tell you this story. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it's it's crazy. Um, gaming news, yeah. gaming news. We have uh, some interesting gaming news. We just spoke about uh, Far Cry Six, just yeah, last, uh, you know, just last week. And uh, yep. how excited we are for it! You know, we got the little, we got the little puppy, you know, the little, the little disabled puppy. We got the, uh-huh. the CD, the CD weapon that plays yeah. the Macarena. Yeah. You know, which Shoot is, people which, in the back, the base of the spine. Yep, it's a top <laughs> hit, the, guys. It's a top hit. Billboard yep. one thousand, whatever. And um, so, to, there's an article that just came out that is talking about how a lot of the game now is going to be in third person, which includes some of the cutscenes. And if you're familiar right. with the Far Cry series, it's all it's all first person, right? And a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, you're changing the tone of it, you know. Then you have the other half are just like, okay, this is exciting new immersive way to play. But the right. developers have come out to say that it is to to show more of your character. Um, right. You know, the character in itself is customizable from male to female to they had they haven't listed anything else but as customizable, mm-hmm. you know, where we've seen in Call of Duty Cold War, they actually have a non-binary uh, selection in the game. Right. Um, you know, so they, they have they I Far Cry hasn't gone as far to use that term, but just more customizable, um, okay. which I which I think they should go into a little more detail on what 
you can do with that. What you can and can't yeah, do. They, I'm sure. I'm sure they probably will here in the near future. I'm sure they probably will. Uh, Deshaun Myers asks, "What third person? Far Cry Six is probably most is mostly going to be in third person. Um, the biggest thing that they're citing is certain weapons and experiences that um, are in the game. Like you have a certain uh, weapon called the Supremo Backpack, where when you wear it." it your character goes into third person so he could show what the weapon does and it shoots like a bunch of missiles and stuff out. Yeah, which absolutely. Really, which is another cool, really cool feature that, that we it noticed. Looked really badass. Yeah. It looked really badass in the trailer. It really did. It's like a, a, port- a portable freaking mortar, mortar system in your back, on, 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 your, on your back. Absolutely. So it looks really cool. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, again, the customizations of the game, you know, if... if you know, they if they're looking to go into a third person view into the game and show more, I think this is great. You know, Ubisoft is famous for these third person titles like Ghost Recon, um, you know, Breakpoint, uh, Wildlands, uh, Advanced Warfare, and Advanced Warfare Two. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's cool. So you know, like we said last week, we're definitely going to mm-hmm. be getting far cry six i'm definitely going to be getting that game I, i'm excited i'm getting it so, for the for the little puppy i just want the little yeah. puppy i want the puppy i want the like puppy. the little disabled puppy i yeah. like that i don't know man dude you got do you have like some sexy saxophone music because like I'm, I'm still i'm still in my head i'm still dancing with a corpse right now like in a big ballroom you know like i don't know why i just i just can't i just can't like get that in i i i, I That's beautiful, man. That's, thank you so much. That was dude, spot I t- I on. I got John. you, man. I got you. Johnny man. on the spot. Johnny on the spot, dude. And, that was and badass. Now, um, <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys haven't been following, we now have E3 oh. news. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. All right, you so, gotta go killing again. Um, we have, you know, so the whole schedule got released. You know, it's gonna be from the 12th to the 15th. Um, Surprise, surprise, your boy is off on weekends. So, you know, I'll be I'll be coming on. You know, if Jay's gonna be available, I'm pretty sure he'll be coming on, but I will um, make myself available. So the first Um let's see. I, I, I wanna make sure I have all the information here. So Ubisoft E three will be the first uh major thing that's happening, which is Saturday, June twelfth. Ten AM well first We'll go to the beginning. 10 a.m. Pacific time will be the pre-show. Um, it's probably going to go down. It's probably going to talk about everything that's going on throughout the day, which at 12 p.m. is the Ubisoft press conference. Um, the lineup that they have will include, it says, we already know, it says here that uh, Ubisoft Forward E3, uh, June 12th at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and they're going to be talking about the new Rainbow Six Quarantine, which is probably okay. going to be a good call for them. Um, we yep. s- it says here we've seen plenty of quarantines in real life in the last year. Yep. Um, Far Cry. Now, now we now we now we can pretend to be quarantined in a game. Yep. And Yay! You know. Also, it, it says here, um, Far Cry Six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, we're, we're probably going to get more more uh, more more gameplay footage and more information on that. So there we go. There yeah, we go. So I'm pretty excited about that. With further details in the next entry in the open world shooter franchise, and it says here we're also due for a fresh look at Riders Republic, the online downhill sports game that was first revealed last year and was originally set to arrive before being delayed. I don't know what I don't know what Riders Republic is, but I will check that out after. Yeah, the absolutely. Show. Um, that actually That's sounds pretty interesting. Um, on top of that, it says uh, Gearbox press conference. Um, Gearbox. I actually think that they make um, they make some games that we have played. Is that bo- boxes made out of gears? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Ge- Gearbox. <laughs> I think Gear. I can't. Re- I can't remember what Gearbox made, but okay, whatever. And uh, sessions with Games Beat. Games Beat. They're you know a news. They make news and stuff like that. So, 
Okay. Okay. Sunday, next Sunday, June thirteenth at eight forty-five a.m. Pacific time will be the Sunday pre-show. This is probably going to be one of the more important days of E3 because nine thirty a.m. Pacific will be twenty-four entertainment, but at ten a.m. Pacific, mm-hmm. yeah, I think we're probably going to have to do a, a live E3 show. I think we should. Yeah, I totally think we should. I think it's going to be a live E3 show next week, guys. And Let's make um, it happen. at 10 a.m. Pacific is going to be the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. Okay. I've been talking about this for weeks now. And, yes, you have. And, you know, uh, with some changes to the podcast lineup, you can't go back in a few episodes to see what we said about the Bethesda and um, Xbox acquisition. And that's okay because we'll, you know, we'll tell you now, we thought that it was a great idea for Bethesda. We thought it was a great idea for Xbox. I especially was very happy about it. And this is going to be good. You know, we may hear some new Fallout stuff. I know we're definitely going to get some Starfield. I, I, I know we're going to get some Starfield. That's a game I've been hoping for and ready for for the last couple of years. Um, they're probably going to show some stuff for Doom. There's probably, gonna yeah. be, you know, I I personally think that we're gonna that we're gonna get um, like a new Doom three. Basically, I would, except, I, I would, except it won't be called Doom three. I, It'll know, be called like Doom Doom Forever or some shit like that. Even though like the last one was Doom Eternal. You know what? You <laughs> know you know what's funny? How I always thought that if, I always thought that they should. I it's like you're in my head, man. That they should make it, <laughs> that they should make you, all these game series. There's like Madden, Call of Duty, yeah. Battlefield. Just come out with a box set, Call of Duty Forever, with all yeah. HD titles yeah. of, of of your game. Infinite, it, infinite Doom. You know, <laughs> you know. And and actually, I have to go back and download those PC versions of Doom because I want to get back into that. Um, They're fun. They are fun to play. Uh, the I PC gaming show will be a, the next show on that Sunday. Um, that'll be 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, Square Man, we're Enix. Gonna be, we're going to be busy, dude. We are going to be busy. Yeah, yeah. I I'm going to I'm gonna have to prepare my liver for that so I can just drink and make fun of everything like I, the whole time. Yeah, Deshaun, we, yeah it, last year... Well, there wasn't really much that happened last year because of coronavirus. Because we know, we know that last they year... Yeah, they la- canceled it. They did cancel E3, that's right, and everything just spread out. That's when we got the WB Interactive, that's when we got the EA Play. Fantastic. Yeah, Deshaun, so you didn't even miss E3 last year because it didn't even happen. It didn't happen, yep. That's okay. Um, You're good, Deshaun. You're good, homie. We got you. So we also have here that same day the Square Enix press conference. Uh, if If you know anything about Square Enix, they are the developers for Final Fantasy um, they're probably okay. going to show more stuff for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which has been a, a fucking seller. But it's also gotten fans divided because of, one, how separated the game is. Um, uh-huh. You know, how long they have to wait. But I think that if you want to, you know, you want to play a good game, you're going to have to wait. You know, it's- I think uh, I think it'll it, it'll happen and it. And- Anytime, anytime you re- you remake or remaster a game, there's going to be those. There's always that element of the fan base that is just staunch and very hardcore about their feelings regarding you know said game. So you you know what was it uh, was it Abraham Lincoln? You know you, you can please some of the people all the time and all the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. Absolutely, like that's that's it. I mean, any with any. You know, like when they when they came out with uh, when they came out with, with the new Doom in uh, was it 2014 or 2016? I forget. Yes, um, when they came out with the new Doom, I mean, you had Doom fans from back of the day, like hardcore Doom fans were like, "This is this is cool," but not a fan. How how you would not be a fan of that game? I don't know if you're a fan. Ah, of Doom. the motherfucking fucker, fucking hyper fucker, fucking fucking fucker. <laughs> yeah. That's basically like yep. that's basically your that's basically your basement dwelling like you know incels freaking yelling about how like the game wasn't perfect enough for them, you know what I mean? So yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> you know, um, so and then the next one after that will be the future game shows. Um, 
I think I think that's pretty self-explanatory what we're going to get. We're probably going to get a lot of independent games coming out, which I've been getting into. There's a couple games on the Game Pass which are pretty interesting to me that I've okay. been like, okay, pretty cool. You know, I'll check that game. I actually downloaded one the other day called Tell Me Why. I haven't played it yet, but it's supposed to be about... Tell me why ain't nothing but... We, we're, we're, they're, they're not. They're not going. They're not going to allow us to put this episode up. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Too many copyrights. No, I'm kidding. The rule is thirty <laughs> seconds or less. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's the right. Um, the next one. Uh, there's an unknown time. I'm actually pretty excited for this. Um, WB W Warner Brothers. If you guys remember last year. Um, I actually did a live broadcast of the WB Interactive show, and was that the was that was that the one where we were just like talking the whole time and drinking and no that making was, fun making that that was the was game, that one that was the Game Awards. That's right. That was okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The, the, you're right. This one was actually, and this was actually when I was actually starting to test out um, the streaming capabilities when we started the podcast. My God, we're getting into a fucking year, man. And, yeah, um, we are. We're, we are. We are rapidly approaching a year that we've been doing this podcast every single week. Like, I don't think I don't think we've missed a week, John. To be honest, I don't like me. Me and, my, me, me and you, my, me and yeah, you, I don't, have never missed a week. That is correct. So we've been doing this every single week, once a week, for a fucking year now. That's it. That's, that's how it's done. That's how it's done, people. We go hard in the paint. We go hard in the paint here. We don't we, we don't skip leg day at motherfucking DD214. We don't skip leg day. Every day is leg day, bitch. No, we fucking don't. All right, dope. we go hard in the paint. No, we fucking don't. But yeah, the Warner Brothers, they, <laughs> they showcased that game called Gotham Knights. And it was supposed okay. to be the, the, you know, people, okay, so people think that this game is a sequel to, baby. They think that this game is a sequel to uh, the past, uh, like Arkham Knight, Arkham Asylum. They, it's not right. a sequel. It's not connected to the games at all. It's an alternate universe story, and you're playing as Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing, and the Red Hood. And if holy crap, yeah, and Red Hood is a good guy. So that's you know, there's a lot of alternate stuff here going on. I was just I was just gonna ask, wasn't Red Hood uh, a potential like? early version of the joker in um in uh the killing joke absolutely and you know if you if you okay. know the lore you know here, here we go uh here comes the the fucking comic i'm getting gotham knights hands down that game is going to be good as fuck i agree deshaun that game is going to be fucking fire and i um and the, if, if you know the history it is four player co-op it is the really? myers is right it is a four player co-op game and what's very interesting about the, the now, if you know the history of Red Hood, it is Jason Todd, the the guy that the Joker ended up killing. Okay, you know that is the killing joke to me, if you think about it. And ha, uh, ha, ha, ha. yep. <laughs> and so I don't know what story they're going on with here. But apparently, you're going with the Court of Owls storyline, and Bruce Wayne is, I think, the enemy. So this is going to be a very good game. I hope to see more gameplay of this game. Absolutely. I'll you think? Wait. You you think Bruce Wayne is going to be the enemy? Absolutely. I would love. I would love to see that. I, I know. I know you're a Batman fanboy, which is you know like that. That's that's your prerogative, and I'm I'm really not. And you know between 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 Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark in the Marvel universe. I don't know which one of them are like a bigger cocksucker. So like freaking um I would love I would love to see I would love to see an alternate universe where Bruce Wayne is the bad guy. I really would cuz I think it, I, I think if Bruce Wayne existed in this world, he'd be named like I don't know, Jeff Bezos or uh Elon Musk, right? And he wouldn't be quite the superhero that everybody or that that that, that he would want to be, right? So, that's just my take. <laughs> Not the super, so, the, not the yeah. superhero we want, but the superhero we need. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and on top did of, you, and I'm. Did you get a little? Did, 
John, did John, did you did you get a little wet, like These, thinking about a billion a billionaire saving you and doing the job that the police can't do? Absolutely, did, did it make you wet? Absolutely. <laughs> on top of on top of um, Gotham Knights, they re uh, last year they also revealed the Suicide Squad game, but it was just a cinematic. So I hope to see some okay. game, I hope to see some gameplay with the, with their presentation that they have, which I Absolutely. which I think is gonna be pretty fucking cool. Um, Absolutely. You know, and then the rest, you know, the rest of the shows we have um, on Monday, June fourteenth. Um, these are all unknown times, but Take Two Interactive, which which they do a lot of those two player games, um, uh huh. Mythical Games, Freedom Games, Razor has a presentation too, which I which I will be I will try to be watching. Um, a lot going on on Monday. My daughter's graduating on Monday. Oh right, dude. What uh, what 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 grade? She's going into first grade. She's graduating kindergarten. Yes, sir. My 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 youngest daughter just graduated kindergarten this year. There you so go. My oldest my oldest uh, finished up third grade, and my youngest graduated kindergarten. I, I tell you what, dude. It's uh, yeah. It's like, happening. Get, get, yeah, get you get get you, get you a little get you a little like weepy in the eyes. You know what I mean? Like it really does. You know, uh, Makes my eyes leaky, you know, when you think about it. Because here, I'm thinking about it now yeah. too. Because I'm looking at Monday. And I'm just like, oh wait, no, wait a minute. This is Monday next week. Whoops, I'm thinking about tomorrow. Oh shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Razor Razor has a um, a, a, a panel that day, which I think is gonna be pretty interesting. They always have fantastic products, and if you guys aren't familiar, I, they actually came out with a with a face mask too. There you go. Um, Capcom, Verizon, and Television have one that day too. And on the last day, the Tuesday, June fifteenth, um, Nintendo Direct and Nintendo Treehouse Live. I should be pretty excited for Nintendo users. I have, you know, my family. We all use Nintendo Switches here. Bandai okay. Namco, Eureka Games, and the official. Oh, this was also major news that broke the E three. 2021 award show it's going to be their inaugural one oh okay they have there's okay. not there's not much information on it at the moment but it, we may you know i may come on or make a I think, quick little video I this we week i think we should I, I i i'm like i'm liking you know i'm liking where you're going with this i, I think we should uh yeah because the e, that that e3 award show is going to be interesting deshaun myers my oldest just graduated kindergarten my little jeremiah is growing up this shit is crazy man dude this yeah it's I, I, crazy I, I tell you, when um when my oldest when my oldest graduated kindergarten um i was in afghanistan on my third tour and we were we weren't on a mission that day. We were I forget what we were doing, but it was it was late in the, it was it was late in the day in Afghanistan, and my um, my ex wife was gracious enough to live stream me like FaceTime, um, so I was able to sit I, I sat on the side of a Connex while the sun was going down. It was getting dark outside, you know, with my fucking rifle slung, and I, I got to watch my oldest graduate kindergarten. It's it's something else, dude. It is something else, man. Like because that's the first. That's the first step, you know, because then 12 years later, we're going to be crying again when they graduate yep. fucking high school. And then however many years after that, we're probably going to be fucking crying, like walking them down the aisle or watching them freaking, you know, take take the next step in their lives as well. So it's, you know, when you when you you get older, you know, whether you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s like me, um, you remember those milestones in your own life. Absolutely. And then now it's. Now it's the next generation's turn, and it just like you get all sentimental and freaking, you know. I, I don't know about you guys as a as a parent. I always question myself, and I I, I I try my best, but there's the there's those days where you just feel like an abject fucking failure, and then watch to watch them succeed and watch them watch them grow, you know. Like our our parents probably had the same fears about us. Absolutely. And you and you, re and you realize you can, all you can do is your best, and as long as you do your best every day and you try and you just spend time with them. They're gonna they're gonna make it, and and they do, and they do. They end up, they end up they end up surprising the hell out of you, with how fucking awesome they are, you know. So it's yeah, it's good shit. It's good shit. Absolutely. Before we get into the bread and butter of the importance of this wonderful Sunday, and it's so great that it landed on this Sunday. I just want to say, um, if you guys haven't, if you guys missed a couple of our last episodes, we have a great Memorial Day episode. 
a really really good memorial the ep- episode and before that we had a fantastic episode with staff sergeant chris bodette yep that yep. was you know um i learned a lot of great information uh about the 12c job and you know for those who yeah. are looking to get into that mos mm-hmm. it was great um and on top of that we had blaze 8 delta 8 thc on, yep. uh, de- on the show too and that was actually like a really like educational thing for me uh, i learned a lot Absolutely. you know what what, 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 I, what did you think i those? never knew i see i Prior to them coming on and, and us having that that long conversation um, with our with with our guests that day, I never knew that Delta Eight could be used to basically get high. Like I never knew that. I didn't know that it was even possible. Yeah. And it was th- it was through them that I learned that I guess it is possible. It's it, there's a it's it's part you know they do an extraction with the chemical compound because you know you always hear like there's there's cannabis and there's and there's hemp. Yeah. And and hemp hemp is where you get Delta Eight. But it's you know we all know you can make rope, you can make plastic, you can make anything out of hemp, right? But you could, but the, the the story went when I was growing up, you just, but you could never get high off of it. Freaking well, apparently now you can, and also because hemp is now legal in the United States, Delta Eight is now legal in the United States. So it's it's a really it's kind of it's a it's a very like loopholeish roundabout way of kind of like shirking shirking you know stupid ass fucking absolutely dumbass drug laws, but. Until until America gets smart, you know, at the federal level, Delta Eight is is a definite workaround, you know, and I'm I'm all I'm all for it. I'm all for absolutely, you know, and freedom. If, and absolutely, you know, so. if you, and if you live in the state that it's completely like THC is completely illegal, you could actually go for Delta Eight, get your creams for your pain, get your you know, get your tooth, get the toothpaste that this that Blaze Eight actually provides, you know, yep. and then you could actually check out you know because what what they did what, after coming on our show they they split up their episode and they're putting like you know their own stuff on instagram so you guys could check them out at blaze online new jersey you know um and yep. you know i and you know just like you were learning so much about them i learned so much from from sergeant Baudet. you know yeah that just he's a good dude that, he's a good dude he's he uh oh by the way he he made it he made it home and surprised his little boy he did uh, it he dressed, yeah. He dressed up as Spider Man. He he flew home from Korea, on on uh, leave. He flew home from Korea on leave, and he dressed up as Spider Man, to be at his, his his little boy's uh, birthday party, and then and then he was able to surprise him. So that was a really, he made it, man. The the pictures are beautiful. So he, he definitely yeah. he definitely did one of those um, things that you see on, you know, those websites and stuff like that. That you know those viral yeah. things. That's pretty cool. Well, good for him. I'm, I'm glad to Absolutely. I'm glad to hear that he's home and he got to do that. Make sure you yeah. guys check out those episodes. They were really really great episodes. Very fun to do. Very fun to do. And you know, hey man, you kick it off with this one, man. So uh, today is today is June June the sixth. So if you're if you're up on your if you're up and on and storied on your on your history. Uh, today is the 77th anniversary of the invasion of Normandy, or the beach landings at Normandy, and uh, the pre- the prior night, June the 5th, is when all the airborne soldiers dropped in. Uh, but of course, June June the 6th is famous for the storming of of, of the beaches at Normandy, uh, in France. Um, single single greatest amphibious landing, uh, largest amphibious landing in world history, world history. Um, it was. Uh, hundreds of thousands of, of troops. Um, just, 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 just to send a shout out because a lot of people don't know this. Uh, the Canadians were there with us. We had British, we had French. Um, it was not, it was not, yeah, it was not, it was, it was not just us. It was a lot of our allies were on, on the Canadian, the Canadians took a a beachhead by themselves. Um, obviously Omaha beach is probably the more, the more famous one because of how much of a meat grinder it became. Um, so we, we definitely want to pay honor and respect to the greatest generation in their finest hour and helping save the fucking world from a goddamn fascist fucking menace that was fucking Hitler's Germany at the time. Um, the world the world would be a much different place if if World War Two had gone differently. Yeah. And um, it's it, it's it's hard for me to imagine even having my own experiences in my generation's war. Um, it's hard to imagine what they were facing that day. Um, young, the, the average age was 
somewhere between 18 and 20 years old at the time. Um, we talked about, we've talked about Audie Murphy a couple times in this podcast and all the, of his exploits. Absolutely. Uh, what we, what we don't often talk about is the fact that like, if you read Audie Murphy's autobiography, he was the only one of his friends that survived the war. So he was, he was like sole survivor out of all his buddies. And by the way, after he did all his stuff in world war two, he still had not hit his 21st birthday when he got home. So, I mean, you, you talk about how, how young, how young these, 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 these men were and to, you know, if you, you've seen Saving Private Ryan and the opening scene, obviously it's very harrowing. If you can imagine there were even, it was even more, there were more people, more bullets, more bodies, you know, and it's hard to imagine. We don't really fight war kinetically. Well, we don't often fight war kinetically like that anymore. Um, there have been, there have been times where we have like places like Fallujah, and uh, the Sunni Triangle in Iraq, you know, with a little bit more of the urban fighting. Um, there's been a couple. There's been a few firefights in Afghanistan that kind of measure up a little bit with a lot of that kinetic fighting. But what they were facing was was easy targets. You know, like the Germans in their pillboxes. They had literally, like, if you watch Saving Private Ryan, there's a scene where you're looking at it from the German point of view. You literally just point a gun, and and they, they, yep. that beach is not that beach is not that big. So when you get trained on a weapon system, it's like not that covered like, either. Oh hell! There was no cover. There was no. It's literally like just shooting fish in a barrel. You actually, you know, and you know, in, in a gaming point too, there are certain games where you they actually depict depict this. Right. In, in World at War, you're actually in Normandy, and right. You know, you're trying to take cover behind behind these big steel these these steel yeah. markers, and and there's no cover. There is absolutely there is no, no cover. cover, and especially it's in Call of Duty World War Two. You you go through you go through D Day as this is happening and you know it, yeah. it, it's just a video game but you have to understand the the, the aspect of how um, aggressive the level is because you're on a beach and you can hardly move because you're getting shot at because you're practically fish in the barrel yeah. at that point. That's right. And it there's a there's a, a story from the engineer corps. You know, like uh, my buddy Chris is an engineer, and the the twelve Bravos, the combat engineers. There's a story about a group of sappers um, and they were trying to clear a path across the beach and they kept getting blown up and some of them immediately died and some of them didn't. But they, what they were doing was the sappers were clearing a path with their bodies and the guys that would get like their legs blown off, they would stick clear, like clear flags in their, in their own legs as they were dying to clear, to clear a path for the next guy to go past them to keep clearing a path to op open up a, a, a channel on the beachhead to get to get troops in there so much much respect to our combat engineers much respect to our infantry and it wouldn't be d-day if we didn't mention point to hawk and the rangers you know like well, rangers lead the rangers lead the way and that was a very storied moment in ranger history where they uh they ascended they ascended a cliff face at point to hawk in normandy and completed their mission and what a lot of people don't know is um we made we made progress on D Day on the landings. We 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 cleared the beachhead basically, but it it was the battle was far from over. Like it Absolutely. took a lot, a lot. It took several several more I think weeks before Normandy itself was officially like they basically just had to clear the beaches to to keep landing troops, you know, like basically like holding a position, and it took it took a lot a lot of time and a lot of people, uh, thousands of young men young men died that day on the beaches. Um, my, my division, uh, fourth, fourth infantry division was, was on, on, uh, I believe, uh, what were they? It wasn't Juno and it wasn't sword. Um, God damn it. I think it was gold. Fourth infantry division, I believe took uh, gold, gold beach. Let me double check that factoid, but yeah, I think it was gold, but, um, yeah, fourth infantry division was there. First infantry division was there. Yes, they were. The Rangers, the Rangers were there. Infantry, combat One, engineers. Yep, 101, 90th, 82nd, yeah, the 4th. 82nd, they, the, they were all there. The 29th and, so, and the 1st. Yep, so if you guys, yeah, if you guys, um, you know, take a, take a minute today, maybe a, a beverage of choice, you know, and honor and remember, um, you know, uh, the greatest generation in their finest hour. So what beach were they on? Gosh darn it. Utah Beach. It might have been Utah. I want to say it was gold, but it might it might have been Utah. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, I think I'm reading it here. Utah. It was Utah. Good dude, good call, dude. It was Utah. It was Utah. So yeah, Fourth Infantry Division took Utah Beach. So, so yeah, and yeah, to our our Canadian our Canadian brothers that took took their beachhead, like props to all of you guys too, because I know I know our brothers and sisters in Canada often get overlooked for their their sacrifices and their assistance 
Uh, I've, ser- I've served some Absolutely. Canadians. Um, I've served some Canadians in in uh, in Afghanistan as well as like Australia, uh, Australian troops, New Zealand troops. Um, we have a lot of allies. You know, the the British, the French, uh, even in even now, in you know in cur- current modern times, I've served with Germans. You know what I mean? And you know, and uh, Romanians, uh, Bulgarians. Like it, it's insane the amount of people I've met from around the world um, that. Have, have now kind of come together after the fall after the fall of the former Soviet Union. Yeah, we get we get to hang out. We get to be brothers and sisters, you know, just by virtue of us fighting in in a war torn country like Afghanistan together. So it's it's really cool. The the Italians. I served with Italians on my first tour. That's um, cool. Oh, it really it really the, it, yeah. Because those it, bastards, back th- those II, bastards could have beards. Yeah, and when you go back to World War Two, I mean, we were fighting against them, and 70, 70 years later, we're fighting together. And that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, I don't ever want to say that war is beautiful, but it's beautiful that our countries can come together now absolutely, and be, and be, and be, and be brothers and sisters in arms, uh, against, against a terrorist menace. You know what I mean? And so, that, and that, co- and that comes to say, cause I'm reading it right here. We have to put it into perspective. The allied, the allies were United Kingdom, United States, Canada, yep. France, Australia, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Norway, New Zealand, and Greece. That's ten countries against one, against one against idea, against one, and it was and it wasn't easy. No, it was it, not. You know, it, no, it, was, it wasn't easy. Nope they had they had they had. I mean, it was called For- Fortress Europe. You know, it was called Fortress Europe, and the uh, the German the, the the Nazis had that that whole continent on lock. Minus minus a couple of small countries, they had that entire continent on lock, and there was a lot of subterfuge. There was a lot of trickery that went on with the Allies, trying to trying to lo- locate where they would make their landings. Um, you know the uh, we, if you guys have seen the movie Dunkirk, where they had where the French had to retreat, um, that could that could have turned into a shit show. Yeah, and the British the British were able to get hundreds of thousands of French troops to 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 the UK uh, to 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 give them a chance to fight another day. Um, and it was really a coming together of a lot of countries against this this menace that really obviously had global implications, but it could have gotten a lot worse than it than it did. And it's yeah, my 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 grandfathers and a lot of my great uncles, you know, fought in the war in World War Two. And you know, when you read the history, when you see some of the the, the pictures, the movies, um, even from that from those those times, it's it's harrowing because it's it's hard to imagine. Absolutely. Like the way we fight, the way we fight war today is not how they, they, they basically got, a, you know, a carbine or a freaking a, a rifle or a, a Thompson submachine gun. And you, you just pointed and that's where you went. And you, a lot of times they were walking into a fucking meat grinder. Um, the Marines and all the amazing things they did in, uh, in the Far East in Japan and the Philippines, you know, with the island hopping campaign, the Navy with a lot of their, their major battles against uh, the, Germany and the Japan. Whole, the whole Pacific theater itself was, was a massacre. It was a massacre, it was. and it was a fight. It was. it was a fight. Yeah, and look at and you know, and, uh, and if it wasn't for for battles like that, it wouldn't shape how how we use our tactics today. That's correct. That's correct. We, we we a lot of our tactics today come from that era, and what basically went wrong, what we did wrong, and how many lives were lost at great cost. You know what I mean? Like, and you know, even as much as I despise their government, uh, we had Russian br- brothers in arms that pretty much handled the entire Eastern front by themselves, you know, and if it wasn't, it wasn't, if it wasn't for the Russian sa- sacrifice, basically like they, they literally threw their, their, their young men into a fucking grinder and just kept throwing more and more people at, at Germany until eventually it broke Germany's back. So, I mean, we're talking, you know, the allied invasion on Normandy was June the 6th. It still took until late April the next year. So almost a year, not quite a year, about another 10 months of extremely hard fighting before it was over. So this, you know, the, 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 the battle or the, the war was very much still in doubt uh, on June the 6th. And if you read uh, Eisenhower's address to the troops, uh, amazing. the night before, the night before, it is amazing. And it, it's, it, it gives you chills reading it because a lot of those young men did not get the chance to come home. A lot of them are still buried. A lot of yeah. them are still buried. Uh, there in France, and I, I hope someday to have the opportunity to travel to Europe and go to France 
Uh, I want to see I want to see the the beach and uh, I want to see Omaha Beach, and I want to visit the grave of uh, Marquis de Lafayette, who was a rev- Revolutionary War hero here in the states, but he was he was French. And actually, if you believe it or not, at his grave, and I think it's in Paris, but at his grave, there's an American flag and a French flag, and they covered the top of his grave with Americans with soil from the United States. That's awesome. Yeah, and it, it, there's a very famous quote when when we retook Paris, uh, one of our generals went there and said, "Lafayette, I'm here," and it's and it's it's it chokes you up even sometimes thinking about it. Like this was a a, a French a French national who came over to the United States yeah. during the Revolutionary War and helped us earn our independence and, and take our independence from from Great Britain. And I got to read that. I got to deep dive on that. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of history in France uh, and and our our countries are very intertwined. Oh yeah, well, uh, you know, if if a lot of people who don't know, they actually they they actually offered us the Statue of Liberty. And they did. and they actually have their own Statue of Liberty, which is a couple times more smaller, and it is in the exact linear direction as the one from New York. Like they That's are, beautiful. they are directly aligned. They're linked, yeah. And it's, yeah. There's a lot of history there. And, and when France, when France surrendered to Germany in World War II, it was it, it, it shocked the, it shocked the world. Yeah, completely shocked the world. America was like, you know, oh hell no. If you look. If you look at all, if you look at all time history, France, believe it or not, France has one of the best war records in all in all of history. They 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 have lost very few times in war, very very few times in war have they ever lost. So if you can imagine, uh, in more contemporary terms, imagine if, you know, somebody tried to invade the 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 UK, and imagine the UK just surrendering like a month or two later. Yeah, it would it would it would shock the world, and that's how it was in that was that's how bleak it became in World War Two. Yeah. When when the when the the Blitzkrieg in France succeeded, and the French government freaking surrendered, you know what I mean? That's like a lot of people make jokes about the French. That it's 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 hard to imagine how bleak it was at that time, though. And part of the reason part of the reason they they surrendered is because they didn't want their people to suffer. You know what I mean? And it was ter- it ter- it's terrifying to think what it would have been like in those days to hear that one of the greatest what one of the greatest allies we have had to surrender. And, you know what I mean? And to like, put it, and to put it into perspective, um, and this is obviously eons before World War II. Napo- Napoleon Bonaparte has a ninety yeah. per, has won ninety percent of his battles. Right. You that know? is correct. So, so you know, if you if you put that into perspective, you know. Yep, and that's yeah. Fr- France has an extremely good war record. Like, the, like the Arc de, the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, it's etched in marble. Like all all of their victories, basically, and. You know, a lot of people. You know, we, we. The United States has a pretty damn good war record too, but y- when you talk about how shocking it was to the world that France surrendered, and it wasn't until f- a couple years later that we were able to finally get back in there and oh, yeah. start retaking that country. Oh yeah, you know we, what I mean? we were like, oh, not not our boys. Hell no, yeah. hell no. Nope. And uh, Deshaun Meyer says we can't forget the work of Winston Churchill. Absolutely, no, we can't. The, the I, guy, the guy was a kook, I, but man, never get that. You know, and I want to I want to throw in this interesting fact too. And this really goes to show, like the type of brotherhood that the military really has. Um, Dwight D. Eisenhower eventually became the thirty the thirty fourth president of the United States. But did mm-hmm. you know that the general that was with him during this time, General Bradley, actually served under him as the Joint Chief of Staff during this time too? So right. It really yes, goes I did. To show. So we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> what ten years after, a little, couple, yeah. you know, about ten years yes, after, but, yeah. you know, yeah. it, they they are still working together, and they are still together. You know, going through Normandy to running the free world, right? That is correct. That is correct. And yeah, like, and then Truman Truman stayed in office long enough to kind of be the the uh, president during uh, the Korean War. Yep. And and shortly thereafter, Eisenhower took over, and. Um, yeah, it's what 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 a, what a time what a diff, what, you know what a time in history to be a part of I guess if 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 you were if you were part of that that era and that generation. Um, How interesting w- would it have been to to live in an, in America with a, a, a known general as president? Yeah, you as know, president. Yeah, because you know, we don't we don't we don't we don't have that anymore. We have we, we have, have we haven't had that since him. We have we have we have celebrity presidents now. We, you know, we're <laughs> starting with start starting starting with Ronald Reagan. You know what I mean? That, that yeah, and people he, think that 
people think it was a new thing with Trump. It was like Ronald Reagan was an actor. Yeah, you know what I mean. People forget that. Like he Ronald was a Reagan, cowboy. He, he did. He, John, yeah. He, yeah, he did. John, what did he did do a John Wayne movie or a few of them? Didn't uh, he? he might. I'd have to look that up. I'm not yeah. sure because he went into politics. Reagan went into politics in the '60s and became governor of California eventually. Yeah. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to look up his I'd have to look up his uh, his acting his acting credits. But um, yeah, we really have not had a a true de facto veteran president since Eisenhower. I mean we we've had we've had we've had presidents that have served in the military. Like J, JFK JFK was a war veteran. Yep. Uh, JFK was a war veteran. He was in the Navy during World War II. A uh, very famous story with him and PT one hundred and nine, the boat that his boat that sank, and he with a broken back, you know, swam one of his one of his injured buddies, you know, and saved his buddy basically with a broken back, right? Fucking war uh, hero. Yeah, it was a war hero. But yeah, since really, really since Eisenhower was like the highest kind of the highest ranking, you know, yeah, president that we've that we've had president that we've we've really had, and it and we really haven't had any since. Uh, and I think uh, uh, George Bush Senior was. He was a veteran of World War II, but he also was the director of the CIA. Uh, George Bush Jr. Uh, w was in the Guard, I believe, in the California Air Guard or something like that, or Texas Air Guard. I could be wrong about that. And then Clinton and Obama uh, were not were not veterans. Uh, Trump is not a veteran, and Biden is not a veteran. You know what I mean? So we're, we're, we we've kind of yeah. ran into this like string of we almost you had, know, we almost had John McCain. Almost, almost had John McCain, you know. Um, but yeah, like we don't really. And uh, oh, what was it? What was the dude that ran against uh, Bush? Um, uh, was, I was about to say it. McCain, but not McCain. No, no, it was, yeah, um, well, yeah, because we just said John it, McCain. Because John McCain, was a, well, the dude, the dude that ran against George Bush in two thousand four was also uh, a Vietnam veteran. It was a uh, swift boat. He was on the swift boats in the doing in the river. But um, yeah, we really haven't had veteran presidents for a while now and it's it's kind of a shame and i don't know i don't really know how i i don't think i don't think john, you need to john, be a, john Kerry. john Kerry. that's it john Kerry. um you don't i don't think you need to be a veteran to serve your country as as president but it sure as shit wouldn't hurt nowadays i'll tell you what man it sure as shit wouldn't hurt because i don't know i don't know about you john i uh i get a little i get a little wishy-washy on you know politics nowadays so i, I won't yeah. go too deep I won't go too deep down the rabbit hole on that one, but I wouldn't mind seeing a, a veteran who has served and who has served in war um, rise, rise to that rise to that level and, and become a leader of the free world. So, but yeah, so D Day, you know, drink a beer, freaking raise a toast to you know everybody that made made the sacrifice and made the ultimate sacrifice to save the world um, in World War Two. So, so yeah, happy D Day. Happy D Day, and wouldn't. Mad Dog make a great president. Fucking I thought he, I thought he would. And I'll tell you what I said a couple of years ago was that he was too old. But <clears throat> excuse me. But look at look at what we're working with here. Like how old is Trump? And Biden's Biden's only like three or four years older than Trump. Like we we keep we keep we keep nominating, you know, like these these freaking old old men. You know what I mean? Like it's like I want to I want to see another JFK. You know, I want to see another Obama where yeah. you're they're, they're in they're in like early to mid forties, and let 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 our generation run the goddamn country. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's, I'm tired of all these like I'm tired of all these old bastards <laughs> that are that are just like stuck stuck in freaking 1950 or 1960s. Like motherfucker, it's 2021. Shit ain't like that anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's, it, a it's, new, like, it's a new age. You know, it's, it is. We, and we need we, our generation needs to step the fuck up. And and I don't care. I don't care which. Anywhere you, you you fall on the spectrum politically, our generation needs to fucking take over. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick of fucking having old men fucking tell me what the fuck's what. It's like motherfucker, you're, dude, you got one foot in the grave. Yeah, because I'm thinking the youngest. You don't need to be running anything. The youngest person in my lifetime that was president was Obama. Obama, and, yeah, and, a, and Clinton. Had, when Clinton was first elected, he was still pretty young too. But yeah, that's it's true, been Obama, yeah, yeah. Ob Obama and Clinton. Yeah, for me, it was Obama and Clinton. It's but yeah, it's like. It's an interesting time, and I love days like this because, like I've said, it, I've said it before. I I love World War Two. Like there's just something so, you know, it it shaped the whole world, and we got, yeah. and you know, don't forget, America got two rings now, so, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's right, back to back two, World War champs, bitch. yeah, two two world championships, <laughs> and you, it's just so, you know, you think, okay, we we look at the first World War, crazy, bloody as hell. 
And yeah. then it happened again. And then, yeah. like, but so much more changed after that. And there were so many great battles, you know. Obviously, no, we, we had D-Day. The, probably the most talked about event ever in World War II. The next to the Pacific Theater, uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, uh, what was the what was the big naval battle? Uh, 19, Midway, the Battle of Midway. Midway, Midway. With, the, with the Navy. Yeah, our Navy against uh, the Imperial Imperial Japanese Navy. Yeah. Like, holy crap, dude. Holy crap. World War, and you know, there's so many great movies and TV shows that are about this stuff. And, and you know, it just really goes to think, how lucky are we to be where we are today? Because we would not, we would be, we wouldn't be where we where we are today if it wasn't for them, you know. And then and then they all go to show what would have happened if we never hit Hiroshima or Nagasaki or you right. know what what if the United States because you know remember the United States didn't come in until late into the war, you know. Yeah, it was uh, December. People people remember December seventh, nineteen forty one, but they forget that it was December seventh, nineteen forty one. Meaning meaning the next month it was not it was already nineteen forty two. Yeah, you know what I mean. The war had been, the war the war started officially on September first, nineteen thirty nine. So you're talking nineteen forty forty one. It was almost three years into the we war. We were chilling. You know what I mean, nothing it was, was like, going. You know, the whole the whole western side of the world was yeah. untouched. You know, yep. North America, South America, Canada, all the way up and down. There was nothing happening in those right. areas. You know, other than maybe. Little little bit after uh, the – it's a little-known factoid that the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, some of them were invaded by Japan. Yeah. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't make it very far, but that's a very little-known factoid. Um, there were very minimal minimal civilian casualties. There, there were civilian casualties in America, but very minimal, very, very minimal compared to – you know, just imagine being your, – your, your entire ho- homeland, your country being overrun, just being completely overrun. You know what I mean? And it's 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 hor it's horrifying to think about, and that's, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, people talk about <laughs> America like losing or like getting invaded nowadays. It's like no, no, the fuck we wouldn't, dude. We haven't like, lost our touch. No, we have not. I don't care. I don't care how out of shape or whatever people in our country are. We still got the guns, baby. We still got the guns. Yeah, I mean, like, and you know, and, and I mean, let's really think about this. And, and this is not just overhyping the home front this is like some literal shit we have we we have a heavy win ratio we we're we're allied with just about everybody. almost everybody you yep. know yep you know and then with those allies we have you know with allies we have what they have you know right it, and i know you know we get you know with the uk we get a little you know soggy <laughs> sometimes but in, yeah. in the but end. we're still we're still brothers. Yeah, we're yeah. still brothers. It, it, we would never turn on them, and they would never turn on us. Like it's that's unheard of. It wouldn't even happen. And then our, our, our speaking of which, since we're doing like today seems to be like little known factoid day. Yeah, twenty five twenty five percent. I'm talking a full one quarter of the entire world's gun supply are is owned by the American by American civilians. Twenty five percent of all guns in the entire world. Belong to American civilians, not the military. American civilians own fully one quarter of the entire gun supply in the entire world. Yeah, so come so on good, over. So good. Yeah, come on over. Good fucking luck, bro. Good fucking luck. Try us, dude. Come fucking try over. it someday. You, you know, I, I, you know, I, I remember playing Modern Warfare Three, and there's a level in there when the Russians are coming down Red Dawn style, and I remember thinking, I wish they would. I fucking wish a motherfucker would, dude. I wish, I wish like, a motherfucker like last would. Last night, someone, <laughs> someone was blowing off fireworks. Someone was blowing off fireworks, and it sounded like a machine gun. And I looked at my wife. I was like, "They're coming." <laughs> they're That's coming. funny. Uh, yeah. They wouldn't get very far, brother. They wouldn't get very far. Oh no, they wouldn't. And you know, we're here. We're here at the end. Um, hey, before we get to the end, I just want to say um, I want to give a huge shout out to the now. I cannot. Conf- Deshaun Myers says, I cannot confirm and deny that I own 2% of that 25%. <laughs> my man. My man. <laughs> That's a low number. <laughs> so, there's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's, a lot of ep- there's a lot of episodes that we, uh, we, we took down off of YouTube uh, to kind of start over fresh uh, here recently. Uh, I, I will not confirm or deny that on a couple of those episodes, I may or may not have flashed a couple of my pieces. So <laughs> just, just saying Deshaun, like I got you, I got you, brother. I got you. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, let them come. And uh, let them all come, dude. Yeah, so they can uh, and I wish it, them motherfuckers. Yeah, you know, and, and and it's cool too because I ha I've had some of these like World War Two conversations with this gentleman. Um, his name is now Sergeant Ben Davies. Um, he is a good friend of mine that I play have that I've played heavily with. Um, and he's a he's a UK he's a UK NCO now. I just want to give a major awesome. congratulations to a. Congrats. Did well, he just get promoted? He just got promoted, and I remember last year. Congratulations, Sergeant Davies. Yeah, I remember last year, and and we have another buddy of mine, um, Tubbs. Tubbs. Because he's a fat fuck, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Con 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 Connor. Uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of jokes, and he, you know, we. He always just say, when are you going to become a sergeant, huh? When are you going to become a sergeant? And, you know, it finally happened. And those two guys, those Good. two guys are a pair. I got to get them on the show one day because those two guys are fucking I would love, wacky. I would love to have that. Dude, I would, I would, that would be great to have um, service members from uh, different different countries, some of our allies. Yeah. That'd be fucking, that'd be a great show. Yeah, so I want to <laughs> say, so I want to huge, huge shout out, man. So congratulations, Ben. Um, this is your time, man. You, you're, you're a good soldier, a better friend, and the best father i've ever met man so keep doing you man i know you watch the show or listen to it somewhere i see i see i see your name on here sometimes so you know thank you and congratulations man absolutely cheers sergeant yes sir and uh yeah who who's doing the final one again we... uh, i think last week was oh it was you? it was it was like a, a joint a joint uh it, it kind of was joint joint venture last week yeah so you want you want to kick it off this week? Yeah, you know, um, as always, everybody, you know, um, summer's coming. A lot of people are going out. A lot of people aren't going out. Some people can't, you know, take big crowds or, you know, hear the fireworks because firework. You know, July Fourth is coming too. There's gonna be a lot of fireworks. You know, all I ask is, you know, be respectful of those around you. You know, um, major thing, you know, if you know, if, if you know a buddy of yours that this is a time that they don't want to go out because of those reasons or other reasons beyond that, give them a call. They may, they, they, you know, for, for, uh, you know, he, t take it from me. Sometimes it's hard for me to, to pick up the phone and give a call to somebody if I'm feeling down. Give them a call. See how they're doing. Maybe they're waiting for you. You know, yep. it's no, it's, you know, no secret that every single week we promote the 22 a day. And the number is right there in the corner. 1-800-273-TALK. And that is 1-800-273-8255. Someone volunteers there to hear your story, to make sure that you are there, that you're there. To make sure that you're there to live, to see the sunlight. Jay told us a story a couple weeks ago. He was feeling down one time, and the only thing he could think about was the sun rising. Yeah, that's right. The only the, the, the only secret the only secret to life is to live to see another day. You know, there's no there's no mystical there's no mystical like quest you have to go on to figure out the secret of life. It's to stay alive. You know, and if you if you're in a bad place and you and you don't think you're going to see another day and you're that scared and that worried that life is over. Stay up all night, watch the sunrise, and when you see that when you see the, the, that sun break over the horizon, you'll realize that you just made it another day, which means if you made it another day, you can go one more, you know, and so on and so forth. It's it's a it's a mentality, it's a philosophy, but I espouse it heavily because this is it's been it's been over twenty years now since I had that bad day, and I'm still here, twenty fucking twenty one years later, I'm still here. I made it to 40. I became a father. Uh, I was able to serve my fucking country. Um, you know, I got to do, I've, got, I've gotten to do so much in the last 21 years after I had that day where I was just terrified that I wasn't going to make it. And it took, it, it, you know, we, we, we go through seasons in life and some seasons are a lot harder than others. But if you go one day, one hour, five minutes at a time, whatever it takes, if you just keep moving forward, you will fucking make it. You will fucking make it. Pick up, pick up your phone. Call, call one of the homies. Call your parents. Call, call your fucking wife or your husband. You know, don't, don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear with living. 
Li- living sucks sometimes. I get it. Fucking living sucks yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Some days, some some days are fucking terrible. I got it. Yeah. But there's never there's never a reason to quit though. Don't ever fucking quit. Fucking don't ever don't ever leave that vacant hole where people can't be around you anymore because you are you are you are fucking precious to the people around you. There there are people out there that love and care very greatly for you, and they will not give up on you. So don't ever give up on yourself. So absolutely. And if you guys are going through a hard time, if you can't pay your rent, if you can't get a bite to eat, there's fucking call us. Give, give us give, give give us a call. Call call somebody. There's also resources that you could take advantage of. Go to your American Legion. Go to your VFW. Talk yep. to somebody. You know, yep. some some of these places they help with with grants. They they help you with the resources yep. to to find other places that you could get clothes. If if you're homeless. Um, there, there are many places that you can go to as a veteran, as a non-veteran as well, that you can get food. You know, if you if you get down in the dumps like that bad, message message the DD two fourteen gaming, message us as the moderators on the Facebook page. I will give you my fucking personal phone number. My phone is on twenty four fucking hours a day. Who are? I I have no problem doing that. I have zero problems doing that. I got nothing nothing to fear, nothing to hide. I will fucking I will fucking contact you directly. Okay, if if you are ever in that bad of a situation, I will figure something the fuck out. I will fucking help you. Okay, I have no problems fucking doing that's my that's my fucking job in the goddamn army is taking care of fucking soldiers. All right, so it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. If it's that fucking bad, fucking message us and I will fucking personally fucking give you my number and I will fucking contact you directly. So absolutely, and if you follow, and if you come into the next couple episodes, we have a couple episodes coming up. Next week will be our E3 Super Show super excited we also oh, yes. have guest frank doc shup and Luis sanchez who have both been very essential to my life Luis sanchez is a is a lieutenant national guard member who is also a real estate agent who will be providing a lot of information on va loans and what is the best options to take as long as we're with Frank Doc Shop, who is also a jack of all trades in the veteran community. So you guys want to, if you guys want to learn how to get resources in your local areas, um, the information that we'll be getting will be for my area of New Jersey. But there are, you know, he's not the only one. So make sure you guys come and check out those show. Make sure you guys listen to us. Make sure you guys watch us. And again, the, the Discord no, uh, the Discord numbers are growing. We see you guys. So thank you guys. It Absolutely. Was, thank you guys for joining us live. It was nice to be here again, and we'll see you guys next week. Hey, John. Hey, John. Can I ask a real quick favor before we before we cut out? Yes. Can can you can you play the sexy saxophone music again, please? I got you. Oh man, I love it, dude. I love it. My favorites. <laughs> I think it'd be a good, good, good to get out on. Yeah, yep, it's a good yep. one to go out on. Yep, right, right before, right before the the new song ends. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Give me one second. Yeah, dude. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Beautiful. Yep. But once again, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. We love you. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>